Hello and welcome to Full Speed Racing where this week we've got F3 Cup action from Brands Hatch and Production BMW Championship Racing from Sneston. But we start on the Brands Hatch Grand Prix loop where it is sunny but somewhat breezy with a full field of cars for the F3 Cup on their formation lap now headed by Tristan Cliff. And this is how they line up with Cliff on pole position. Louis Hamilton Smith shares the front row of the grid from then Alice Pound, Henry Chart, row two, James Cross. Harrison row three and Alex Craven, championship contender all the way down in seventh. And they come to the line, the red lights about to come on as the drivers get the five second board. The revs beginning to rise in car with Paul Tristan Cliff. The red lights on, out they go. It's a wretched jump start from Dave Graskus and not such a good getaway either from Tristan Cliff who is jumped by Louis Hamilton Smith who leads into Paddock Hill Bend and then Alex Cravens has a super getaway and he takes third place away from Alex Powell as they head through Paddock for the first time and climb up Hailwood Hill into Drew it's James Cross then next long from Henry Charter slightly messy start that one or two drivers creeping but they've all seem to have sorted themselves out one way or another as they turn through Graham Hill Bend and sprint on the Cooper straight. Good battles already forming in the midfield as James Cross defends from Chart, who bobs and weaves in pursuit. And I think he's been able to dive through into fifth position. We'll find out. Yes, he has. So Chart takes fifth away from Cross as the race leader Louis Hamilton Smith plunges down. Pilgrim's drop for the first time. He's got Tristan Cliff in pursuit. Then Alex Craven, pink helmeted Alice Powell next long from Henry Chart. Good battle going on further back. Chris Headlam just ahead of Robbie Watts, Dave Kraskus and Stuart Wiltshire as they all bob and weave for position turning through Westfield. Ready in the front of the field, out of Dingle Dell and into Sheen. You really get a sense of just how quick these F3 Cup cars are, but they have to get on the brakes. The left-hander and Sterling, always a tricky corner this because you've not necessarily got the tyres warmed up. The left-hand corner is easy to outbreak yourself in the early stage of the race, as demonstrated by James Lederman, who does just that across the gravel trap. Unfortunately, an opportunity for him to sample the Marshall's Biscuit collection rather than race through to the flag. In the meantime, the battle will lead the race, closing up between Hamilton Smith and Cliff. Then that gap back to Alex Craven, who's not really under pressure around this pal. Unlike Mark Harris, who's about to maybe lose a place to Chris Headlam. As we go back to the fight at the head of the field, Cliff asking all sorts of questions of Louis Hamilton Smith. Wherever you look, really, there's fairly frenetic that battling going on. Headlam trying to challenge Robbie Watts. We couldn't find a way past Mark Harrison. Still unable to pick his way into lead the race is Tristan Cliff. But Cliff has really found the sweet spot in terms of the setup on that Lara F307. Therefore, he has been the man to beat over the past couple of races. But Louis Houghton Smith, likewise, a multiple race winner in the F3 Cup, not the easiest man to overhaul. The rest of the top five just begin to spread themselves out then. It's the James Cross, Mark Harrison, Robbie Watts and Chris Headlam battle. And we know that that Lannan racing car in the hands of Chris Headlam is a very, very quick one because it set the F3 Cup lap record on the Grand Prix circuit 12 months ago in the hands of the Karouj Carney. A lap record, though, which it is widely predicted is going to be shattered today by Tristan Cliff, such was his qualifying pace. Yesterday, as Robbie Watts looks to find a way to the inside of Mark Harrison, can't quite do it. So Harrison maintains his position still. Chris Hedlund looking to cheek past as Cliff in the stitcher behind Louis Halton Smith. Looking to charge into Panic Hill Bend and he's going to go through into lead the race. And Tristan Cliff able to jump clear of Louis Hamilton Smith. Perfectly judged manoeuvre. And on a circuit where it's not the easiest to overtake in the Formula 3 car, the run along the Brown Strait into Panic Hill Bend really is the golden opportunity. And Tristan Cliff taking full advantage. So through he goes and into the lead of the race. Now, can he pull clear? At the moment, he is looking to do just that. Hamilton Smith has got Alex Craven, and that is Powell, though, staying in pursuit. And it's Craven and Powell, but very much the drivers at the four of the championship. There is Matt Payne, a little bit lower down the order. Payne, though, on course, and will be hoping for some championship points. As the leading quartet turn through Hawthorne, then Henry Chart in fifth, just begin to be dropped from that leading group. And he's well clear of James Cross in sixth. He's moved clear of Mark Harrison. And now Chris Headlam, so it's Robbie Watts, who's been rather shuffled out of that group. So disappointment there for Watts. He's beginning to move into the clutches of Dave Karaskas. There's Chris Headlam, he's looked particularly feisty, hasn't he, in this race thus far. He's evidently got inherent pace in the car. He's just really struggling 
to demonstrate it, but he's got the move on Mark Harrison into Sterling. But Harrison moves across, takes the late apex, and therefore boxes out Chris Headlam, who can't find his way through. All the while, though, Cliff continuing to pull clear of Louis Hamilton Smith, Alex Craven, and Alice Powell. And this frustrating performance from Powell. She would really have been hoping to challenge for a podium position. She's still able to do so, and she's got a lot of ground to make up if she wants to fight for the overall race win. Into Druids, then Mark Harrison chased by Chris Headlam and Robbie Watts, the three of them negotiating Druids and then heading down into Graham Hill Bend. Around the left-hander, they turn for they sprint along the Cooper Strait on towards Surtees. around the left-hander, and where can he find a way past Mark Harrison? He's really tried several options already, and Harrison seems to have an answer, and again, there Harrison just moves slightly to the inside line at Hawthorne's, making sure that Chris Heatherman is under no illusions about his chances of finding a way through to Hawthorne. What about around Westfield? Again, no opening for Heatherman. The rest of the pack all beginning to converge on this battle as well. You can see that Mark Harrison is possibly acting just as the corks in the bottle here. Certainly Chris Heatherman trying every which way to pick his way past him. Robbie Watts stay with him as well, sprinting then into clearways. Hedlum, who has raced with considerable success in radicals as well, is really used to these high-powered slicks and wings cars. Draws alongside Harrison now into Paddock Hill Bend and finally makes the move. And it's a spectacular one on the brakes, outside into Paddock. And Robbie Watts looks to follow through immediately up Halewood Hill into Druids. And that's exactly what Brands Hatch instructor Robbie Watts is able to do. So he gains the place. And in the blink of an eye, Mark Harrison shuffled down the pack. So frustration for Harrison. He drops all the way down to ninth. As it's now Headlam and Watts who take their turn at looking to challenge James Cross. In particular, Chris Headlam. You can expect to see him bang in a couple of very quick laps as Tristan Cliff has been doing. He's in fact now broken the F3 Cup lap record for the Brands Hatch Grand Prix circuit in his bid successfully thus far to move clear of Louis Hamilton Smith. As we rather surmise might happen, Chris Edlam immediately onto turns with James Cross. He's all over his rear wing. And Cross having to take a fairly defensive, cautious route through Sterling, just a couple of miles an hour slower, maybe at the apex, than Chris Edlam. So around Druids, Tristan Cliff moving clear of Louis Hamilton Smith, Alex Craven, and then Alice Powell. And somewhat surprisingly, Powell's not really made any inroads into Alex Craven just yet. As Chris Hedlum looks to make that repeat move on James Cross's Paddock Hill Bend. Instead, he forces the error from Cross, who slithers wide. That's a golden opportunity for Hedlum. James Cross, though, able to move across, takes the inside line for Druids. So no way through on that occasion for Chris Hedlum. It's brought Robbie Watts into the battle as well. This is very much the closest dice in the race. It's really being triggered by the fact that Chris Headlam has got such an inherently fast car underneath him, but he is coming up against some very astute defensive driving. First of all from Mark Harrison, now from James Cross, but down the hill, on towards Hawthorns, and still Chris Headlam frustrated and thwarted in his efforts in trying to move clear. Oh, and that's again looking to the inside to Westfield. He clearly has the pace, but James Cross able to drive very wide car back. Now he slides wide the exit of Westfield, and that's Headlam's opportunity. Through he goes, and out of Sheen, and Headlam has got finally up into sixth position. Frustratingly, though, Henry Charles is now the best part of the 20 seconds up the road, so I suspect it's probably as far as Headlam is going to go. But James Cross, though, he immediately has to divert his attention to trying hold off Robbie Watts behind him Watts in Lara F306 versus the F302 of James Cross so Cross in the car that's four years older than that of Robbie Watts maybe that will have a bear on the battle I somewhat suspect it probably won't but at the same time Robbie Watts knows all the tricks of this Brands Hatch circuit he knows where he can just find an extra couple of hundredths of a second when he really needs to I suspect to be able to gain that place on James Cross that's what he'll need to try and do. So they head along the Cooper straight. Had them already pulling clear of this battle. Then it is cross from the blue car, Robbie Watts. And still, Mark Harrison, the white machine, staying with them. All the while, though, Tristan Cliff commanding the race. 
will be ever further clear of Louis Hamilton, Smith, Alex Craven and Alice Powell. Into Hawthorne and still Robbie Watts unable to even really force James Cross into driving defensively in the way that Cross was having to do to keep Chris Headlam at bay. Though he does live dangerously at Westfield, it's where he lost out to Headlam and he almost lost out again. Just runs out a little bit wide, but then Robbie Watts does the same through Sheen right to the periphery of the circuit. Trying to challenge Cross into Sterling, so he couldn't quite do it. And they're about to reel off another lap. We're getting towards the latter stage of the race here as well. They've only got a few more laps remaining, therefore, this is going to be frustrating for Watts if he's going to make the move. But he needs to do it sooner rather than later. And drama and problems for Tony Bishop and Stuart Wiltshire. The pair of them tangling each other and firing off into the gravel trap. So frustrated retirees. And Bishop in particular quite near to the edge of that gravel trap. Louis Hamilton Smith has got Alex Craven now right on his tail. Also Alice Powell joining in. It's Jonathan Weston Taylor. They're just putting a lap on in particular. Alex Craven has now been granted the opportunity in the very late stage of this race, the opportunity to really challenge Louis Hamilton Smith for the second step on the podium. Through certainties they turn. And Hamilton Smith just sliding in the rear of the car. He's going to work very, very hard as all the while. Tristan Cliff just a couple of corners from home. And ever since he made that move on Louis Hamilton Smith, he has controlled the race absolutely perfectly. It's been an emphatic performance from Tristan Cliff as he accelerates out of Clark Kerr for the final time. The Jacob flag is ready and waiting and it's going to be a victory in the F3 Cup at Brands Hatch. It's for a delighted Tristan Cliff, both hands off the wheel, punching the air in delight. But all about the battle for second because Hamilton Smith has got Alex Craven in his slipstream. The pair of them head to the Jacob flag, but it is going to be Second for Hamilton Smith, third for Alex Craven, Alex Powell in fourth. Thumbs up from Tristan Cliff, and why not? Perfect drive from Cliff as he acknowledges the marshals. Let's have a look then. Final classification with victory for Cliff from Hamilton Smith and Craven. Alex Powell in fourth from Henry Chart. Dave Kraskus winning the trophy class in tenth. In terms of the championship standings, well, it all closes up very nicely. Alice Powell leads the way but concedes points to Alex Craven and Tristan Cliff gains ground on both of them. Well, that's it from the action from Brands Hatch. Well, join us after the break where we head to Snetterton, racing for the Marangoni Tars Production BMW Championship. <laughs>